Seven years after the mess that was Hellraiser Revelations, Dimension Films once again needed to make another Hellraiser movie in order to retain the rights. So we got Hellraiser Judgment. But was it as bad this time? It is about two detectives who are on the case to find a gruesome serial killer terrorizing the city, and they dig deeper into a spiraling maze of horror that may not be of this world. Welcome to Box of Chocolates, where you never know what you're gonna get. We are at the end of the Hellraiser review series. We have the new one coming out very soon, but out of the ones that already exist, I have gone through them all for the first time, reviewed them all, and I have made it. It has been a hell of a journey, it's been quite interesting, it's been kind of fun to talk about, and so we are here at Judgment, the last one released before this upcoming Hulu reboot. We're gonna go into my opinion, if you have seen this, you have your thoughts, leave them down in the comments below, we can talk about it down there. We're gonna stay spoiler free. So this one came out in 2018, again they needed to make a new one to retain the rights. However, the situation is not as bad as it was with Revelation, because we have Gary J. Tunnicliffe, who actually wrote Revelations, I don't know if I can blame him that bad, because he probably had to do it really quickly, but he wanted to write a script for a new Hellraiser movie. He wanted one to get made, but they weren't looking to make one at the time. So he took his Hellraiser script, removed all the Cenobite references, and tried to get it funded as an independent film as its own unique story. That didn't go over, and when they eventually did decide, okay, we do want to make a Hellraiser movie now, they went to him, they said, you're trying to get a Hellraiser movie made because you're passionate about it, you genuinely want to revive the franchise, well, we need one, so can you make it? And so he did. He also plays the auditor in the movie, so automatically, while it's still coming from a iffy place of being made to retain rights, there was more passion behind it from some of the people involved, and you can certainly tell. It's still very quick, it's like 80 minutes long, but... There is a lot more to this than Revelations. Thankfully, after that, I didn't really know how much lower you could sink. So this is a bit of a step up. It's not at the top of the franchise or anything, but it's not the worst. I feel like I'm kind of on a curve because I'm comparing it a lot to Revelations in my mind. I think about the use of the budget, which was probably still very low, but it utilizes it so much better. Sometimes you can tell just how cheap it is, but it never looks or feels quite as bad as something like Revelations. The way they light the scenes, the more creative imagery, the way they utilize just the locations, the atmosphere. It felt like you had some people on board who knew what they were doing, knew how to utilize that budget to the best that they could. And the acting is better. It's not gonna blow anybody away or anything, but I don't even think I mentioned the acting in Revelations because I guess it was just like a given. You know the acting's not good in something like this. Do I even need to mention it? All the other things that were wrong with that, the acting just kind of got lost in that messy see. It's a little bit improved here. It's fine. And luckily, you have a much, much better Pinhead. This guy's face actually looks more suited to being Pinhead. They have the voice down well. His acting is solid. The effects they put on the voice work very well. And again, with the way it's shot, they often keep him in the shadows and they know how to make it look pretty decent. We also have some other creative designs for the Cenobites, like this chef dude, he's a big fat guy with a baby face mask, and this gimp guy with blades, and the auditor, and you've got all this unique designs, unique additions to the lore of the Cenobites for the first time in a long time, really. It doesn't necessarily gel with the original and what Hellraiser and the Cenobites are supposed to be, but after so many movies just deteriorating in quality, I'm willing to take this as something new, something fresh, especially since they're not continuing it. We're getting a whole reboot. You can just kind of consider this its own other thing. So with that in mind, it's kind of an interesting idea where they're like, listen, the box isn't cutting it anymore. We're just gonna set up shop on earth and invite people to come to our house, <laughs> which sounds weird, but that's what happens. And they come up with this really 
gross but unique system for judging people's sins and what happens to them after that and the exact methods by which they're tortured and they even introduce more creatures into the lore. You have the sort of demonic side with the Cenobites and they actually go into the angelic side a little bit which I never really expected to see from Hellraiser and we'll talk a little bit about the execution of some of that later but it's at least an interesting addition, adding something new that we haven't seen. There's some pretty good imagery, whether we're talking about this system of judging sins and the weird shit that goes on there, some of these crime scenes that the serial killer has staged, some of the kills. It is sufficiently bloody. There are some fucked up scenarios. There's a scene with a dog, and luckily the dog made it out okay, but... Others involved certainly did not. There is some fun to be had with the blood and gore and some of these unique elements that it brings to the table. It has more going for it than the last couple Hellraiser movies, by a long shot for sure. However, it definitely has its major issues as well. While I do think this pinhead is way better than the last one, it does feel very much like Doug Bradley light. Like they're just trying to imitate Doug Bradley. I saw some mentions by the director or the actors or whoever that they were trying to like do their own unique thing with this version of Pinhead. And I don't know what they're talking about because it just feels exactly like the Doug Bradley one, which good, but again, it does feel like slightly lesser because it's not actually him. So I'm glad that the new one is going in a different direction with the female Pinhead because then you can distance yourself from the Doug Bradley version and help to see it as its own whole new thing and not just like an imitation. Even though the bloodiness is really cool, there is other shit they do that is just disgusting. I'm desensitized to movie violence. I've been watching horror movies since I was very young and I can just acknowledge easily that it's not real. Fountains of blood is not the kind of thing that you're gonna see often in real life if you're lucky. So you can easily divorce it from reality and think, oh, that's just fake. But when you get into shit like spit and vomit, and, and no, I, I, I don't wanna deal with that. I don't wanna see it. So when you've got this whole method that they're using to divine someone's sins, it's creative, but it involves this guy just like chowing down and you're zooming in on all of his spit coming out and then he vomits into this thing and it goes through a tube and these women put their hands in the vomit and like mush it around. And then later on, a bunch of ladies pour their spit and all this gunk into this guy's mouth and it's all like gurgling up and it... You can't eat while watching this. That's for sure. It's, I, I, don't, I don't want that. I don't like to look at it. What are you doing? <laughs> the story of this is also incredibly uninteresting. It feels like a lame episode of Supernatural, honestly. It's just once again a detective story where we're looking for this serial killer and it feels like a really, really cheap knockoff of Seven. Except instead of the Seven Deadly Sins, it's the Ten Commandments. While some of the kill scenes are sufficiently fucked up, the actual story and the desire to catch this guy it's horribly uninteresting, and it is capped off by what I might say is the single most obvious reveal I've ever seen in any movie in my entire life. It's actually kind of odd how the movie doesn't even attempt for a single second to make you think it could be anyone else other than the person that it so obviously is from Jump Street. It's uh, embarrassing, I think. And it doesn't necessarily have to go for a surprise. You could have something else like emotional investment. You weren't shocked by it, but you care. No, I don't care about these characters in the slightest. They were far too bland, so I didn't have that either. This entire story of these detectives I don't care about, looking for a serial killer in the most generic, cheap, seven knockoff way possible, culminating in a reveal that was the most obvious thing possible with no emotional investment. The entire story is horribly uninteresting. It's just kind of something you have to sit through to get to the bloody scenes here and there. And even though this was written to be Hellraiser, you could convince me that it wasn't because it doesn't really feel like the story of these detectives looking for a serial killer ties in that much with the Cenobite stuff. It mostly does thematically, talking about giving punishment to sinners and how people have become jaded with the way modern humans behave. But for the most part, when you're watching that story play out, it just kind of feels like a different movie. And even though this introduces 
Angels, it doesn't really do much of anything of interest with them at all. It's just kind of like a lady. <laughs> it's just some random woman in a suit walks in and is like, oh, she's an angel, I guess. Sure. And then the ending. Uh, if they had planned to follow it up with something, you know, you could have maybe done a thing or two with it. But just stopping right there, it's, it's, a, it's really bad. It kind of soured the whole experience. <laughs> Also, I almost forgot, which understandably so, Heather Langenkamp is in this movie of Nightmare on Elm Street fame. That's amazing. I saw her name in the opening credits and I was like, holy shit. And then a large portion of the movie went by and I hadn't seen her yet. I'm like, where is she? When is she coming? And then the movie ends and I was like, what? Where was Heather Langenkamp? And I, I, I looked it up and I realized that she had already been in the movie. I just didn't even realize it was her because she was in it for like 30 seconds, and I just didn't even realize that that character who was so meaningless was her. And she was like one of the top build people in the credits, so I was looking for something more significant, so I just kind of felt yeah, a little upsetting. Like, oh, you just, you wasted her. Why would you do that? So ultimately, this one has more going for it. It felt like somebody who genuinely wanted to make something a little bit more unique and bring back Hellraiser, and I'm sure would have liked to continue and do more if he had been able to, but it just didn't pan out that way, and I, I am glad, because it certainly has a lot of issues and is not one of the best by any means. I'm glad they're doing something new. This new one looks good. The early reviews have been good, so I'm actually excited for it, especially after watching all of these sequels. Most things are going to look really good in comparison, but I have done it. I've gone through them all for the first time. We started high, we dipped a little bit, and then woo! Okay. Overall, could have been a lot worse. There were only a couple that were, like, terrible, but ultimately as a franchise with how many of them there are and how many are, even if not the worst, still not good. Eh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit rough, but I did it. And so now we're just going on to the new one. Thank you so much for watching this whole way. Leave your thoughts on this movie down in the comments below. We can talk about it. Leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more from me, we have that coming soon. A lot of other movies to talk about as well. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you for the next one.